Hello and welcome to this channel, Dr. Biohack, where we are going to talk all things biohacking, longevity science, how we can be superhuman and live as healthy as possible for as long as possible. I hope you are all well. Thank you for listening to this first in a series of little episodes all to do with biohacking. If you are new here, welcome. I am Elizabeth. I am passionate about health and wellness and living well, aging well. And to be honest, as my research progresses, my fascination with aging and the body and biohacking has just become more intense in recent years. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm kind of switching it up on here and talking more about biohacking, because I think it is just so powerful and so important. And we are going to get right into the depth and the meat of this subject. And it's such a huge subject, so it's going to take us quite a few episodes to cover it all. So if you do like these sorts of things, please do subscribe. Subscribe, um, give this little video a like if you enjoy it. We are going to be talking all about everything from insulin resistance, glucose monitoring, weight loss, obesity, mental health, cognitive functioning, brain health, ways that we can optimize the body, high performance health tactics, um, peak tweaks, I like to call them, you know, when we're on our goal to high performance health. And I'm really excited to basically put all of my knowledge into these episodes. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, I have my PhD in nutrition and dietetics and my master's degrees in public health and health economics and my undergraduate degrees in microbiology and molecular biology. So biohacking is basically a huge combination of all of these things. So it's really exciting to talk about that. So let's get started. As it's the first episode in this series, I thought it might be a good place to start with. What exactly is biohacking? What is it? Why is it important? And why is it gaining momentum in the scientific community? So biohacking is a huge term that basically can cover a full range and spectrum of um, activities and science and um, ways to enhance our biology. It's essentially DIY biology. And on that spectrum, you have sort of where I am around the um, natural elements of biohacking, hacking, if you will. So that's things like optimizing food, nutrition, optimizing natural ways of um, wellness, like getting sunlight, vitamin D, good sleep, not smoking, toxins, environmental glyphosate, all that sort of stuff, sort of being aware of things that we can control, um, right over to the complete opposite end of the spectrum where you might sort of see more um, modifications, body modifications or um, synthesized technologies where things are all sort of uh, joining up together. And um, I did read a, a study a little while ago about, it was called um, underground biology or um, like yeah, it was underground biology or underground DIY biology, something like that. Basically, it was about how citizen science has emerged and people are um, like hacking their own genomes. And there's people out there who are trying to engage in gene therapy outside of established organizations like universities, hospitals and research institutes. Um, and there's some people who've done some extreme modifications with things like eye injections or um, synthetic materials inserted under the skin or working on um, kind of designing and optimizing in a more technical way. And sometimes they can be called grinders. But I like to think of, bi of biohacking as the art and the science of optimizing our brain and our body for high performance health and optimal wellness. That's essentially where I sit and what my vision is. And I like having this kind of umbrella genre almost because I find that when I've gone through my studies, for example, and I've looked at um, aspects of nutrition and one of the projects that I've just completed recently is looking at the role of ultra processed foods in cognitive and neurological functioning and you can get really caught up and really focused on the area of just ultra processed food and the impact that can have on the biology and the body. You can go, you know, go down multiple rabbit holes once you start sort of getting into these areas. Um, but then there is a whole host of other areas that can work together to optimize your overall wellness and your overall health performance. 
And that's why I find biohacking really helpful and really well placed to bring together all of the different aspects from cognitive functioning to metabolic health to weight loss to autoimmune diseases. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look at some of the aspects that we can optimise in our lives to go after that high performance health, to try and really improve our wellness and our health. So when we look at the overall person and all of the things and all of the factors that interplay together to try and help us to be the best that we can be, there is a few key areas. Nutrition and dietetics is a good place to start. Nutrient-rich foods and nutrient-dense foods, they are what facilitate overall health and wellness. Adequate nutrition is essential for all molecular functioning in our bodies, the transport of different nutrients across membranes, the utilisation of energy by our cells, the health of our mitochondria. All of these things are directly impacted by our food. And we can think about food in terms of what it offers us. So when we're thinking about how to optimise health, you might want to think about antioxidants, micronutrients, superfoods that can help and re-energise and help us to offer those vitamins and minerals that can encourage stamina and encourage better mental health, better digestive health and more energy. It's important to consider the variety of foods that you eat, the types of food. So lots of vegetables. For good gut health, it's recommended to have 30 types of plant-based food. So that doesn't necessarily just mean lettuce and tomatoes. It could be anything that essentially comes from a plant. So nuts, legumes and vegetables, of course. So lots of vegetables and 30 different types over a week is optimal for good gut health. But that also helps us to ensure that we're getting a wide variety And foods that are available to us naturally in a whole state, that means that they're not not processed, um, like pasteurized or with chemicals or added um, sugars and uh, preservatives. When we consume these types of foods, we're ensuring that we get a good breadth of different types of nutrient because every nutrient plays a role within the body. So different types of foods, a wide variety of that ensures that we cover all of our bases because it is optimal to get our nutrients from food. There is some research around supplements and supplements can work as a supplement. Uh, But the latest research looking at this is that there is a very minimal difference between taking a wide variety of uh, vitamin based supplements and compared to placebo groups. So there's a few randomized control trials that have showed a limited improvement with supplements. That's not to say that they don't have their place, but the recommendation is that we really should be getting as much of our nutrients, like as much nutrition from food sources rather than from taking additional supplements. Also in the context of nutrition and dietetics, it's really important to consider processed foods because the more processed foods that we consume, the poorer our health outcomes are. Now, this is something that I've just done quite a big research project on the role of ultra processed food in human health and the impact that has. And there are a lot of negative consequences for overconsumption of ultra processed foods. And there is a specific system for analysing what constitutes as a processed food. And it has led to some countries in the world like Brazil take a much stronger stance on ultra processed food because of the negative impact on human health and the consequences for overall wellness in the individual. So when you're considering your nutrient profile and your nutrition dietetics and what you're going to eat this week, it would be really good to try and limit the number of processed foods. Since the 1970s, late 1970s, we've seen an exponential increase in the number of ultra processed foods available in supermarkets and in in accessible locations. And that is predominantly due to the fact that they do have a larger shelf low, a longer shelf life. So because of the way that they are they are manufactured, the manufacturing process uses a number of techniques and also chemicals to ensure that these foods have got a longer shelf life. Um, also things like high sugar because it reduces microbial growth and these kinds of things can increase the shelf life on a food product, but it doesn't necessarily increase the nutritional value for us. So reducing the number of processed foods that we consume is really important. There is also such a thing as um, epigenetics and one of the things that uh, I'm also studying as part of my research at the moment is a 
uh, nutrigenomics, which is basically the types of food that you consume and the impact that that has on the expression of your genes. So although we all have a genome, our DNA within our cells, you can manipulate what is expressed either directly or indirectly by your environment. So different stresses can cause genes to be uh, switched on and switched off. And there is a role of nutrition within these genes being turned on and off. But this is a massive subject and it's really fascinating. So I'm going to do a whole episode on both epigenetics and nutrigenomics as well. So as well as diet and nutrition, it's also important to consider things like sleep and routine and the quality of that sleep. And if you really are into wearables, there are lots of tools and wearables that you can obtain now that can help give you an insight into your sleep and the quality of that sleep. And so it's always worth making a few slight adjustments where you can, things like a cooler room, much darker room to sleep in, less blue light before sleep, um, not using uh, technology that has got a lot of blue light in it before you go to sleep because that can disrupt the um, hormones that induce that sleepy feeling that can lead to a more deep and quality sleep. Then we've got really obvious ones like exercise now on this channel. If you've watched any of my videos around brain health, I did a, a really fun brain health series uh, maybe last couple of years ago now. Gosh, the pandemic's really pushed everything back. So it was a good couple of years ago. But I talked all about BDNF, which is brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is one of um, the best things to encourage the growth of new brain cells because neurogenesis is possible in adults. So if you can give your brain that optimal environment, you can cultivate the generation of new brain cells and exercise and lifelong learning are the keys to that really or some of the big players that can help to encourage the density of your of the brain and the different regions of the brain and also exercise basically is amazing all across the board it reduces all cause mortality it reduces innumerable cancers by large margins so even working in some exercise into your diet and lifestyle if, if you don't do any at all you are already going to ultimately improve your health just from looking at your diet reducing processed foods and doing a bit of exercise like that is going to give you some huge huge wins Hormones and hormone disruptors. Again, this is going to be another episode in itself because we are surrounded by endocrine disruptors, basically chemicals that can mess with our hormones. And there is a really amazing book um, that I read last year, I think it was, called Countdown by an American epidemiologist. She's an environmental epidemiologist and she basically looks at reproductive health in males and females and talks all about the innumerable um, endocrine disruptors that surround us all in daily life, our environment, and how that can really impact on everything from our fertility to our mental health as well. So being more conscious and taking more um, ownership of what's in your immediate environment and being aware of what's around you, that can really help when you are looking to biohack your own health and to improve your overall wellness too. Then we've got things like mindset and how we can improve our mental strength and things like exercise, reading, studying, designing our environment, removing the clutter. There is so much science around having a clutter-free environment that has a, such a huge impact on our mental health and wellness. Then we've got things like using our technology, our stress in life and tools that we can utilize in order to improve that. So things like meditation, being outside, nature therapy. Nature therapy, Nature therapy is really important and it's a really powerful tool that we have at our disposal because basically we can kill a lot of birds with one stone. We can get outside, get some vitamin D, which is amazing for mood, for our immune system. It's amazing for the transport of uh, nutrients across molecular barriers. It is essential for wellness and the generation of essential components within the body. And while you're out there getting a little bit of sunshine, you can go and do some walking, which is obviously has all the benefits of exercise. And if you can do all outdoors, ideally in some sort of green environment, then you're going to get all of the benefits of being outside in nature as well. So there are some really kind of quick wins and some some big lifestyle changes that we can make to improve our overall wellness. And I think to summarize today's overview and introduction to biohacking, that I would say that anybody can biohack because all that biohacking means is that we take control and take ownership of our own body. And like I said at the start, it's my belief that biohacking is the science and the art of optimizing our brain and body for high performance health and optimal wellness, which is what we want. We want to be the best and the most healthy that we can be. 
So I hope that you enjoyed this first episode, this introduction to biohacking, this overview essentially of all of the things that can contribute to living a healthy and optimized life. Um, it was a very broad introduction and the, the following episodes to this one will cover each area in a lot more detail. So I'll leave a little comment in the um, section below just so you can sort of see the types of episodes that are coming up. Thank you so much for watching, for listening. If you're listening to this, um, if you do like these sorts of things, please do share this with anyone who might be interested or subscribe to this channel if you would. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for being here. Yeah.